So in celebration of Shakespeare's birthday, uh, Sky Whitcomb and I, Rachel Finley, wanted to share one of our favorite Shakespeare scenes. It's from Richard III, Act 4, Scene 4. I will be portraying Queen Elizabeth and Sky. And I will be playing Richard III. Stay, madam. I must talk a word with you. I have no more sons of thy royal blood for thee to slaughter. For my daughters, Richard, they shall be praying nuns, not weeping queens, and therefore level not to hit their lives. You have a daughter called Elizabeth, virtuous and fair, royal and gracious. And must she die for this? Oh, let her live, and I'll corrupt her manners, stain her beauty, slander myself as false to Edward's bed, throw over her the veil of infamy, so she may live unscarred of bleeding slaughter. I will confess she was not Edward's daughter. Long not her birth, she's a royal princess. To save her life, I'll say she is not so. Her life is safest only in her birth. And only in that safety died her brothers. At their birth, good stars were opposite. No, to their lives, ill friends were contrary. All unavoided is the doom of destiny. Ooh. When avoided grace makes destiny. My babes were destined to a fairer death if grace had blessed thee with a fairer life. You speak as if that I had slain my cousins. Cousins, indeed. And by their uncle, cousined of comfort, kingdom, kindred, freedom, life, whose hand so ever launched their tender hearts, thy head all indirectly gave direction. No doubt the murderous knife was dull and blunt till it was wedded on thy stone-hard heart to revel in the entrails of my lambs. But that still use of grief makes wild grief tame. My tongue should to thy ears not name my boys till that my nails were anchored in thine eyes and I in such a desperate bay of death like a poor bark of sails and tackling wrapped rush all to pieces on thy rocky bosom madam so thrive i in my enterprise and dangerous succession of bloody wars as i intend more good to you and yours than ever you or yours were by me harmed what good is covered with the face of heaven to be discovered that can do me good the advancement of your children gentle lady up to some scaffold, there to lose their heads. Unto the dignity and eye to fortune, the high imperial type of this earth's glory. Flatter my sorrow with, re with report of it. Tell me what state, what dignity, what honor canst thou demise to any child of mine? And all I have, I and myself and all, will I endow with all a child of thine. So in the lethe of thy angry soul, thou drown the sad remembrance of those wrongs which thou supposed I have done to thee. Be brief, lest that the process of thy kindness last longer telling than thy kindness date. Then know that from my soul, I love thy daughter. My daughter's mother thinks it with her soul. Hmm. What do you think? That thou dost love my daughter from thy soul. So from thy soul's love didst thou love her brothers, and my heart's love, I do thank thee for it. Be not so hasty to confound my meaning. I mean that with my soul I love thy daughter, and do intend to make her Queen of England. Well then, who dost thou mean shall be her king? Even he that makes her queen, who else should it be? Thou. Even so. How think you of it? How canst thou woo her? What would I learn of you, as one being best acquainted with her humor? And wilt thou learn of me? Madam, with all my heart. Send to her. By the man that slew her brothers. A pair of bleeding hearts. There on engrave, Edward and York. Then haply will she weep. Therefore present to her, as sometimes Margaret did to thy father, steeped in Rutland's blood, a handkerchief 
which say to her did drain the purple sap from her sweet brother's body and bid her wipe her weeping eyes withal. If this inducement move her not to love, send her a letter of thy noble deeds. Tell her thou hadst madest away her uncle Clarence, her uncle Rivers, ay, and for her sake madest quick conveyance with her good aunt Anne. You mock me, madam. This is not the way to win your daughter. There is no other way. Unless thou couldst put on some other shape and not be Richard that hath done all this. Say that I did all this for love of her. Nay, then indeed she cannot choose but hate thee, having bought love with such a bloody spoil. Look! What is done cannot be now amended. Men shall deal unadvisedly sometimes, which after hours gives leisure to repent. If I did take the kingdom from your sons, to make amends, I'll give it to your daughter. If I have killed the issue of your womb to quicken your increase, I will beget mine issue of your blood upon your daughter. A granddam's name is little less than love than is the doting title of a mother. They are as children, but one step below. Even of your metal, of your very blood, of all one pain, save for a night of groans and joy of horror, for whom you bid like sorrow. Your children were vexation to your youth, and mine shall be a comfort to your age. The loss you have is but a son being king, and by that loss your daughter is made queen. I cannot make you what amends I would. Therefore, accept such kindness as I can. Dorset, your son, that with a, a fearful soul leads discontented steps in foreign soil, this fair alliance quickly shall call a home to high promotions and great dignity. The king that calls your beauteous daughter wife familiarly shall call thy Dorset brother. Again, you shall be mother to a king and all the ruins of distressful times repaired with double riches of content. But we have many goodly days to see. The liquid drops of tears you have shed shall come again transformed to orient pearl, advantaging their love with interest of, of ten times double gain of happiness. Go then my mother, to thy daughter go. Make bold her bashful years with your experience. Prepare her ears to hear a wooer's tale. Put in her tender heart the aspiring flame of golden sovereignty. Acquaint the princess with the sweet, silent hours of marriage joys. And when this arm of mine hath chastised that petty rebel, dull-brained Buckingham, then, bound with triumphant garlands, will I come and lead thy daughter to conqueror's bed, to whom I will retail my conquest won, and she shall be sole victress, Caesar's Caesar. What were I best to say? Her father's brother would be her lord? Or, or shall I say her uncle? Or he that slew her brother's and her uncles, under what title shall I woo for thee, that God, the law, my honor, and her love can make seem pleasing to her tender years? Infer fair England's peace by this alliance. Which she shall purchase with still lasting war. Tell her the king, that may command entreats. That at her hands, which the king's king forbids. Think she shall be a high and mighty queen. To veil the title as her mother doth? Nay, I will love her everlastingly. But how long shall that title ever last? Sweetly enforce until her fair life said. But how long fairly shall her sweet life last? As long as heaven and nature lengthens it. As long as hell and Richard likes of it. Nay, I, her sovereign, am her, her subject, lo, 
But she, your subject, loathes such sovereignty. Be eloquent in my behalf to her. An honest tale speeds best being plainly told. Then plainly to her tell my loving tale. Plain and not honest is too harsh a style. Your reasons are too shallow and too quick. Oh, no. My reasons are too deep and dead. Too deep and dead. Poor infants in their graves. Not on that string, madam. Heart on it shall I, till heart strings break. Now by my George, my garter, and my crown. Profaned, dishonored, and the third usurped. I swear. By nothing, for this is no oath. Thy George, profaned, hath lost his lordly honor. Thy garter, blemished, pawned his knightly virtue. Thy crown, usurped, disgraced his kingly glory. If something thou wouldst swear to be believed, swear then by something that thou hast not wronged. And by myself. Thyself is self-misused. By the world. Tis full of thy foul wrongs. My father's death. Thy life hath it dishonored. Why didn't it? By God. God's wrong is most of all. If thou didst fear to break an oath with him, the unity the king my husband made, thou hadst not broken, nor my brothers died. If thou hadst feared to break an oath by him, the imperial medal circling now thy head had graced the tender temples of my child, and both the princes had been breathing here, which now two tender bedfellows for dust. Thy broken faith hath made the prey for worms. What canst thou swear by now? The time to come. That thou hast wronged in the time o'er past. For I myself have many tears to wash hereafter time. For time past wronged by thee. The children live, whose fathers thou hast slaughtered, ungoverned youth, to wail it in their age. The parents live, whose children thou hast butchered, old barren plants to wail it with their age. Swear not by time to come, for that thou hast misused, e'er used, my time's ill use over past. As I intend to prosper and repent, so thrive I in my dangerous affairs of hostile arms. Myself, myself confound. Heaven and fortune bar me happy hours. Day yield me not thy light nor night thy rest. Be opposite all planets of good luck to my proceeding if, with dear heart's love, immaculate, Ocean holy thoughts, I tender not thy beauteous princely daughter. In her consists my happiness and thine. Without her follows to myself and thee, herself, the land, and many a Christian soul, death, desolation, ruin, and decay. It cannot be avoided but by this. It will not be avoided but by this. Therefore, dear mother, I must call you so. Be the attorney of my love to her. Plead what I will be. Not what I have been, not my deserts, but what I will deserve. Urge the necessity and state of times. Be not peevish found in great designs. Shall I be tempted of the devil thus? Why? If the devil tempts you to do good, shall I forget myself? to be myself. 
by if your self's remembrance wrong yourself. Yet thou didst kill my children. But in your daughter's womb I bury them. We're in that nest of spicery they will breed selves of themselves to your recomfiture. Shall I go win my daughter to thy will? And be a happy mother to the deed. I go. Write to me very shortly, and you shall understand from me her hand, her mind. Bear her my true love's kiss. And so farewell.